Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the law of sines. Previously, we've talked about the law of cosines, with, which, as you recall, is kind of a longer, drawn-out formula, which, when you first see it, seemed kind of complicated, but you saw that the more that you used it, it really wasn't that difficult. Today, we're going to be looking, like I said, at the law of sines, which is a much smaller formula. In fact, it's right here on my left. And that formula, let's just go ahead and talk about it. That formula is set up as a proportion, where it's a sine of an angle over the side of a cross of it is going to be proportional to another angle, the sine of another angle over the side across from that other angle. So for example, the sine of angle A over side A is proportional to the sine of angle B over side B, which is also proportional to the sine of angle C over side B. So that is the law of sines. Now just like with the law of cosines where we use that for side angle side situations and side 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 situations, we use the law of sines in this manner for angle side angle and angle angle side. Now there is a third one that we're going to talk about a little later that gets a little bit controversial, uh, but we'll talk about that in the last half of our notes. But for right now we're going to focus on angle side angle and angle angle side situations. Well, let's go ahead and let's look at this example. So this example here is trying to figure out the distance across the lake. And the distance that they were looking for is that distance f. Well, if you look at that situation, we have two angles and the included sides. We would say this is an angle side angle situation. And what I always like to look for when we're going to set up a, and use our law of sines in an angle side angle or angle angle side situation, I want to start with the given information. So in other words, an angle and the side across from it that are known. So here we can see that we know this angle here is 40 degrees, but the side across from it, we don't know that angle. Right? We don't know that side. And the other angle, the 110 degrees, and the side across from that one, we don't know that side either. The only side that's known is the side that's 400 meters, but it's across from angle B and they don't give us angle B. So we have to remember some properties of triangles. Remember that in a triangle, all three angles add up to be 180 degrees. So in this triangle, we have two angles that are 40 degrees and the other angle that's 110 degrees. So together that makes 150 degrees, meaning we have 30 degrees left over. So that means that angle B is 30 degrees. So now I have some information I can work with. I have an angle, 30 degree angle, that's across from a known side. So that's what I'm going to start out with. And I'm going to use that to set up a proportion using the other angle that we know, the 40, de 40 degree angle, to try to find the side that we're trying to find the missing measure of, side f. So let's go ahead and look at how we can set up, set up that proportion to solve for side f. Okay, so remember the known information was that the sine of 30 degrees, or that angle, that 30 degree angle was across from the side that was 400 meters. Oops, we don't need the meters. So just be sine of 30 degrees over 400. That's going to be proportional to the sine of the other angle that we know. Now again, we know two other angles, the 40 degree angle, the 110 degree angle. But since we're trying to find the length of side F, it's going to be the sine of 40 degrees over F. Now to solve this proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply these values together. So I'm going to start by multiplying the F times the sine of 30. That's going to be proportional to 400 times the sine of 40. Well, in the long run, to be able to solve this, I'm going to have to divide both sides by the sine of 30. So we would have 400 times the sine of 40 degrees, all divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And when you do that on your calculator, you're going to get your answer. And your answer for this would be, well, we'll just round this to be 514 oops, meters. So that would be the distance across the lake between the uh, main campus and the, the campsite. Let's look at this next one. A lot of times these types of problems like to use uh, directions referring to, like in this one, south of east or north of west or south of west. Um, so let's see how we would set this up. It says, from Ben's house, 
A tower is 17 degrees south of east. Okay, so let's say this is Ben's house. Well, actually, I'm going to put this a little lower. Okay, so this is Ben's house. And it's saying that there's a tower that's 70, 17 degrees south of east. Well, going from Ben's house east, we would have that length. But the tower is 17 degrees south of that. So let's say this is the tower. That means this angle here would be 17 degrees because that is 17 degrees south of east. Now, from Peter's house, which is four kilometers due north. Now, due north means it's directly north. So we'll put Peter up here. So from Peter's house, which is four kilometers due north of Ben's house, the tower is 40 degrees south of east. Now, that's referring to Peter's location, not from Ben's location. So from Peter's location, if we go straight out to the east, then from the angle that's formed going from south of that side there for east, this angle here would be 40 degrees. Well, I'm going to redraw our triangle. So our triangle looks something like this. Now, we want to know the interior angles for this triangle. So I know that going from, or these two sides, going from going south to Ben's house and going east, that's a 90 degree angle. So together, these two angles make up 90 degrees. So that means the missing angle there has got to be 50 degrees. And down here, this angle is past 90 degrees, because this would be 90 degrees, plus another 17 degrees means that this angle down here would be 107 degrees. So now I have enough information to figure out how far it is from Bud's house to the tower. So we're trying to figure out what this length is. So again, I'm going to start out with what I know. And this is an angle side angle situation. The only length of the triangle that I know is this side here that's 4, and that's across from this angle. So before I can get started, I need to figure out, well, what is the measure of that angle? Well, since these two angles together would equal 157 degrees, subtract that from 180, that tells me that there's 23 degrees left over. So that angle would be 23 degrees. So now, with what I'm given, this angle and the side across from it, I can start out by saying the sine of 23 over 4 is proportional to, again, we're trying to figure out what this length here is for x, which is across from the 50 degree angle. So it would be the sine of 50 over x. And now we can cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I can set this up. I can multiply the x times the sine of 23 equals 4 times the sine of 50. Again, I didn't mention this in the previous one, but you want to make sure your calculator is in degree mode when you go to solve this. So here I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 23. So to figure out what x is, we're going to take 4 times the sine of 50 and divide that answer by the sine of 23. Again, making sure your calculator is in degree mode. When you do this, you should end up getting 7.8 kilometers as your answer. So band would be 7.8 kilometers from the tower. Now, Remember back in middle school when we learned about angle side angle and side angle side and angle angle side? We all kind of snickered in the back of the room and thought, what about ASS? Is there an ASS in math? Well, guess what? We get to talk about ASS now. Now, we got to be careful. Okay, We don't want to offend anybody. So instead of calling this ASS, we're going to call this SSA, just to be more family friendly. So for SSA situations, or ASS, it's possible for us to come up with a few different scenarios. This is going to be a little bit different from the ones we were just working on. There's three possible situations we could have if we're dealing with a SSA, ASS situation. And those three situations would be you could have zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions. 
Now, how do you know if you have zero solutions? Well, when you go to, because um, a lot of these situations, we're going to be finding an angle measurement. And when we're trying to figure out that angle measurement, if your calculator says something like domain error or it's not possible, then you know that there's no solutions. And that usually happens when we're trying to take the inverse sine of a number that has that's bigger than 1. Because remember, for the sine function, you're not going to have anything in your range of being larger than 1 or negative 1. So if it's outside that range of values, then it's not going to be possible. So um, yeah, so when we're dealing with the inverse sine, if we're trying to take the inverse sine of a number bigger than 1, it's going to say domain error or some other kind of error, which means that there's no solution. Now, how do we know if there's just one or two solutions? Well, that I'm going to show you with the following examples. Okay, so with this one, it says in triangle x, y, z, y equals 5, z equals 3, and angle y equals 60 degrees. And we want to find the measure of angle z. So to start out with, we need a diagram just to help us out. It's going to be a reference tool. It's not going to, it doesn't have to be exact. So we're just going to draw just a random triangle here. You want to avoid making a right triangle so you don't confuse yourself. Um, but we'll just call the vertices again x, y, and z. Now it's important to remember that when we're dealing with angles, we use capital letters. And when we're dealing with sides, we use the lowercase letters that are across from those angles. So when it says y equals 5, that's referring to the y, there, or the side, across from angle y. That's going to be 5. When it says z equals 3, that's referring to the side across from angle z. So that's going to be a length 3. And it says angle y is 60 degrees. Well, we need to figure out what's the measure of angle z. That's our goal, to figure out the measure of that angle. Well, here we have a side-side angle situation, or a SS situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up again using the law of sines. We're going to start out with what we know. We know that this angle is across from, so the 60-degree angle is across from the side. That's 5, so it'll be the sine of 60 over 5. That's proportional to, now this angle is across from the side that's got a length 3. Now remember, it's the sine of an angle. Do not take the sine of 3. 3 is a side length, not an angle measurement. So we need to take the sine of theta, or you could say z, whatever you want to put here, over 3. Now we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply. Let's start off by multiplying these two together. So this will be the 5 times the sine of theta equals, now I'm going to multiply these together, 3 times the sine of 60. So now what I want to do is I want to divide both sides by 5. And I could do this on my calculator all in one step, or I could just wait a minute, which is what I'm going to do. Because at this point, what I want to do is I want to get rid of um, the sign. And what we'll do that, we'll, we learned about that in a previous video, that's going to be the inverse sign. So we're going to take the inverse sign from both sides. So when I do that, I end up getting that theta equals the inverse sign of 3 times the sine of 60, all divided by 5. Now you can type that in your calculator now, all in one step. Take the inverse sign of 3 times the sine of 60, divided by 5. Now what I would encourage you to do is make sure you, if you're using the um, TI Inspire, Use control divide to get that large fraction. So you can put this stuff in the numerator of the fraction and put 5 in the denominator of that fraction. You would have seen me do that in a previous video. And when you do this on your calculator, you end up getting your answer, which is 31.3 degrees. Now, remember I said with these situations dealing with SSA, we are going to want to check to see if we get if we get a solution we need to check now to see are there two solutions well here's the way you check that remember we had the supplements theorem back in the previous chapter and we've had videos on that so the supplements theorem tells us that to find another angle measurement with the same sine value we can subtract this from 180 and when we do that we get 148.7 degrees well, 148.7 degrees, technically the sine of that would give us the same value as a sine of 31.3, but we need to make sure, does it make sense to have an angle 
of that size in this triangle. When I look at my triangle, if this angle were 148.7 degrees, if I add that to 60 degrees, that's more than 180 degrees. So that is not possible. So for this problem, there's only one solution, 31.3 degrees. If you want, you could try the next example. We're, we're actually going to skip that. Let's go to this uh, example 3A here. We'll conclude with this example. So for this one, again, we're going to have to draw a triangle. And we'll call this one, again, triangle A, B, and C. Angle A is 35 degrees. Side AB is 8, so this time they're referring to them using segments. And segment BC is 6. We want to find all the possible measures of angle C. So we're looking for the measurement of angle C here. Again, this is an angle side side or side side angle, to be more cleaner here. Side side angle situation. So we want to make sure that we check to see if there's 0, 1, or 2 solutions in this case. So to set it up, first I know that this angle is across from that side, so I'm going to start with a sine of 35 degrees over the side that's across from it, which is 6. Again, we don't know angle C, so it's going to be the sine of angle C, or the sine of theta, over the side across from it, which is 8. There we go. So now we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply. 6 times the sine of theta equals, multiply these together, 8 times the sine of 35. Divide both sides by 6. And now to get theta by itself, we're going to take and use the inverse sine of both sides. So theta here equals the inverse sine of this quantity, 8 times the sine of 35, all divided by 6. And when you plug that in on your calculator, for theta, you're going to end up getting uh, 50 degrees as your answer. If we round it to the nearest degree, you end up getting 50 degrees as your answer. Now remember, though, this is a unique situation. This is one of those SSA situations. So we need to check to see if there is a second solution that would work. And we do that again by using the supplements theorem. So we're going to take 180 minus the 50, degree, 50 degrees that we got. And when you do that, you get 130 degrees. And the sine of 130 and the sine of 50 degrees have the same value. So I have to check now, is it possible for this angle to also be 130 degrees by looking at my triangle? So if that were 130 degrees, it would be possible because 130 plus 35 is 165 degrees, leaving us with an angle B that then would be 15 degrees. So there's two possible solutions here for theta. Theta could be 50 degrees or 130 degrees as your answer. So that's how you can tell if there's two solutions. So hopefully you understand now how to use a law of signs and how to apply it to some different situations. And just remember that uh, when it's angle side angle or angle angle side, there's always just going to be one solution for your angle. You don't have to worry about checking for a second one. But when we're dealing with angle angle side, we're trying to find the measure of an angle. Or I'm sorry, when we're trying to angle side side, and we're trying to find the measure of an angle, that's when you have to use the supplements theorem to check to see if there's going to be a second angle measurement that would work. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.